Afternoon everybody. I'm uh, actually out here today. I'm going to be installing new brake pads today. So I've got the FA473s in. I'm sure everybody was aware of that. If you've been watching my videos. And uh, today we're going to go through the steps of getting these lovely little brake pads into place on the bike. Here they are all ready to go. In the next few minutes I'll be gathering tools, uh, setting up my shop, and most importantly it's time to get this bad boy in the air. We only need to raise the rear and you're going to learn about the easiest way to jack up a uh, spider that I know of. I'll be backing it onto an auto ramp and just using a simple safety um, chalk if you will or you know the, the stands with the screw stand and we're going to uh, go ahead and you know set that up so I can get the ramp out of the way and just have all free clearance to do whatever I need to do. So it's really not necessary to pull the ramp Mostly, I just don't want to be bending down and sitting on the floor today. So next, the trike goes in the air. After I do that and set up tools, I'll be visiting with you briefly. We'll take it from there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace. So now the trike is in the air and uh, we are going to take a few seconds to take a look around. There's a couple different things that I've immediately noticed in the brake job that have to be addressed and we'll, we'll just jump right into it. I'll go ahead and show you what we need to do to make sure that everything is, is copacetic with this. But I have noticed a couple issues here that likely caused my premature failure of my rear brake pad to begin with. And this is something I just didn't notice, something that can happen. And honestly, something you should be pulling your saddlebag off to check for every now and then. Let me explain. As you progress through the wear cycle of uh, a rear brake pad, you start to notice that it will. Um, you're, you're expected to go in and perform maintenance on your rear brake. That's that's an expected function. It's used as a parking brake for one. And secondly, I know myself as a spider ride, my worst notorious habit is not releasing that parking brake. I'll take off down the street, the power cycle barely even notices, the, the Can-Am is actually strong enough and mine's tuned at 120 some odd horses, but with the torque that I have, I don't feel it when my e-brake is gripping and I take off with it engaged. So it's very easy for me to burn it down and I tend to do that, I've been getting a lot better about it on this set and I wanted to make it last longer. But as I went through the life cycle and I wondered because 
I'm actually at a point where you get about two tightening sessions out of a rear brake. I was on my first one and I'm already burnt out. So I went into the brake and you can tell here if you can see it. I don't know if you can see the adjust there. Yeah. That adjuster that you see hiding out in the background that is fully set to the back. In other words, I'm stretched to the max to be able to get that uh, brake function to work. And now it's starting to roll down even the slightest of graded hills. So it's dangerous and it's a pain in the butt. And also when I have to for apply performance braking or step on the brake quickly in an emergency situation, I got to do a double hitch to get the brake pressure up because the, the pads are worn down so far. That will change today. Uh, I'll be adding oil after I put the new pads on. But when I took my rear bag off today, I noticed a big, big error as I looked over the system. Now, you, I don't know if you can see it in here, but look at the top of that brake rotor wheel. You see something wrong there? I do. Now, as I went so tight or loose on my settings to get my, or, you know, far back, I should say my brake was so far out of adjustment. Let me get a better look from this angle. Look how that rotor looks. You see how the cable is stretched over the top of, of the limiter? If that's been going on a while, which it likely has with my last adjustment because I tend to take them out too far and then pull them back in and do a roll test on the wheel so I can make sure, they're, sure that they're adjusted correctly. I'm not able to do that or wasn't able to do that, so I just did it quickly. This is what I get for doing things quickly. Take your time, folks, because when you hurry through your service procedures, you can cause mistakes. Now, when I got into a brake situation, and what happens is, is if you get in a hurry and let go of that parking brake, especially if it's way down at the bottom and it slaps back up when this cable's extended like that, you'll get an arch in the cable, it'll loop over. Now, why did it do that? I found mistake number two. And I don't think that you can see this, but it's going to be hard for me to get a camera here at this angle. But trust me, back here at this picture, there is a plate bracket that has four holes instead of two. And I'll get a better picture of this later on when I, when I disassemble. But you'll see what I mean, and I'll get a, I'll get a snapshot of it for us. Um, you'll see what I mean about this bracket, which holds the adjuster. I think you can see it from down below here. Either way, this bracket that holds the adjuster is in a quarter inch too far. So a mistake in my services on the overall brake rebuild that I did two years ago is causing this to happen. So this is why it's critically important that you pay attention to where your things are placed and where they're not placed when you're doing these projects. So today am I not only replacing the infamous FA, uh, EBC FA473 organic brake pads, I'm also going to be conducting and doing a repair here and making sure that this is all properly aligned because this causes the cable to tighten more than it should. And now if we go down and look at the brake itself, I don't know if you can see well in there, but you can see how those pads are burning down and how thin they went. I had another year's worth of wear on these pads. They should change out about the same time you need a new tire. And with my car tire, that, that's the way it times out now uh, with my Kumo Extra. So um, this is critical. I caused an error, and I'm kind of lucky I didn't damage the rotor. It's got a little bit of scoring damage, uh, but that will wear off in time with the organic. So... Uh, we're going to move forward and go ahead and start disassembling. And thanks for watching. And I, bear with me. I'll be doing this in stages so you kind of get an idea of what we're looking at, so on and so forth. So uh, anyway, um, I hope you enjoy this This a bit, a bit of a long one, but it'll be time warping the most of it. But I wanted a chance to explain the importance of inspecting your work. Even when you complete a, a position, and I did not do this, or complete a job, you should take a break, go drink a cup of coffee, Come back out and reinspect the work before you release it for the road. That's just good general advice for anybody doing services. It's how I maintain quality control in my own shop when I have my own place. My mechanics hated me for doing it, but hey, I didn't get objects returned. Anyway, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, from here, we're going to be removing this, the outer disc, then the bracket, then there's two bolts that have to be loosened and removed. And as we drop that, we drop in the new pads and lift up readjust away we go pretty straightforward job so hopefully we get this wrapped up in a, in a jiffy i've done this on this model of bike probably about 10 times and uh 
on most other models I've done rear brakes many 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 countless times so uh, thanks for watching have a great afternoon and enjoy the video peace
Hey again. So I'm taking a quick break real quick to just point out a couple things where you've kind of seen me fumbling around. I brain farted. It's been a while since I've been under the rear brake. It's been two years. Give me a break. Uh, funny joke. So one of the things I'm going to note about the Can-Am that I hate is it intermixes SAE and metric bolts. It doesn't matter if it's in the brake system. doesn't matter if it's in the engine system. It doesn't matter what system it's affected. Most of the systems that you work on on a Can-Am, you're going to run into a situation where there's a metric and SAE bolts. This is especially true of Rivco kits because they make bikes for even foreign bikes, but they all do it in SAE, and they only provide enough, provide enough metric tools to get the darn thing mounted, or metric uh, hardware to get the darn thing mounted on, on the metric bike, and then the rest is SAE, and they don't tell you. So, one general uh, word of advice is when you get into project work on this kind of stuff, make sure you have both SAE American Standard and metric wrenches available, both in your sockets, in all sizes, half inch, quarter inch, three eighths, and in your hand wrenches as well. Now, the bolts that actually hold the brake up into place are metric at 13 millimeter. The bolts that hold the calipers on onto the mounting plate and help me deal with getting the pads out are American, three eighths Allen. What is that? I know they make 10 millimeters, that's why I have it in my toolkit over here. But, you know, this is what you have to expect and work with. Why? Because the brake system that they employed was probably a brake system that's made by an American manufacturer or Canadian that was available to them in SAE standard and they bought it quickly and put it on. From 2013 forward, this is a 2012 model, you have the bin, uh, Bindo brakes or whatever, you know, Binford, whatever they called them fancy ones, Bimbos. Uh, and our Bimbros, that's what they are, Bimbro brakes. But, um, before then, it's all just standard, you know, rotational stuff that they put a plate on for, you know, their, their ABS system and so on and so in VSS. But we're going to continue on from here. The only thing I have left is to remove the actual mount bolts that hold the caliber to the mounting plate. And they have two clips on the back that I forgot about. That's what you saw me fumbling with earlier. So we're going to move forward from there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.
Oh, and one more quick warning. Now that your brake plate is off the bike and dangling, you notice everything is still sitting at the, the diameters, if you will, on the slide plates, on the mount plates. Do not, do not step on that brake. Do not put a piece of 2 by 4 under it if you have to. In fact, I'm about to do that because when I go out on brake to do the gardens, I don't need anybody coming along and stepping on this brake. So take, be sure that you uh, take some safety measures. Here, I'll show you how it's done even. Just get yourself a simple 2x4 that you might have laying around the shop and put it up under that brake so they can't push that brake pedal down. So you have to exercise it out enough as it is to get the new brake pads into position. So be very careful. I'm also going to be popping the seat, checking my brake levels, and making sure that I don't overflow the system with the brake levels and going from there. So thanks for watching, folks. I don't know why this camera is focusing on the outside light so much, but it sure seems to be satisfied on it, and it's getting, driving me crazy. It's supposed to be in selfie mode, so uh, and it's quit. But anyway, um, again, do not, do not, do, do not, not, not step on that brake pedal when you're servicing the rear brake. Make sure you put an object under there that can wedge it up so children that come along or whatever's in your shop circumstance don't ruin your day. If they step on that, they've just made it that much harder for you. We'll uh, talk to you later in peace.
Well, I'm back, and as you saw, uh, even the simplest of jobs can get a little complicated. Now, there's a couple things to note. I have done about three rebuilds on this machine on the back, or replaced three pads, one full rebuild. Now, there are the screws that hold the mount in place. They come from the factory with this incredible bonding material on it, and it as it heats, it re-sticks kind of thing. So I ended up uh, getting the mount back on for the emergency brake and tightened, but not to specs because they use torque screws and uh, they stripped out. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'll order a caliper. It's fine with the, the tension that, I, that it has on it for now, especially with the, bolt, with the uh, thread seal that they have on those bolts. I'll be just fine. And of course it's my emergency brake, so I'll be able to monitor that. But you know, the point is, is that um, uh, this is an area where they're putting steel into aluminum, they're using the wrong type of things, that kind of stuff, and this was part of the first year releases issues that you run into. And I'd completely forgotten about that caliper and those two bolts, And uh, but I'll be dealing with that on the next rebuild. That'll be when I replace the tire. I'll go ahead and get some new organic pads and throw back there as well. One thing I've also noted is the winding is gone. So uh, if we're using semi-centered pads, and you back up, you'll get brake wind. That's because the uh, aspects or the centered bits that are in the brake lay in a certain rotational direction as you apply the brakes at high speed. And when you go in reverse, they kind of pop out a little bit and wind against the brake. But now that I have the organic brakes done, no more wind. So, big advantage. Thanks for watching, and uh, I wish it had gone a little better. This one's a longer video, but I've got a couple shorts coming up today as well. Peace.